Hi, this is Mike Ernest, and I'm really excited to share this presentation with you today entitled Strategic Talent Development. And I've created this presentation for two reasons. The first is that I want to provide you hopefully a more strategic and refreshing way to look at developing talent, whether it's our people's or even our own. The reason I created this video is I want to give to you some new ideas and some new ways of thinking about developing talent, whether it's for a group of people or an entire organization or even yourself. This presentation consists of two business rules that I want to discuss and the problems and opportunities associated with them. The first rule is the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of our work activities generate 80% of the value businesses place on us. It's easiest to describe this 80-20 rule graphically. So I've used a cone here to represent both the quantity of time, which is in the middle of the cone, as well as the escalating dollar value on the outside. So at the lowest level, we have the standard communications, and that represents the greatest amount of time and the lowest value to the organization. It needs to happen, but it's just not highly valued. It doesn't, it's not visible. It's not leveraged. So something we need to do, but it's certainly not very uh, opportunistic for our careers or, or the need to develop that talent. Move one step up, you get into the core production activities. That is the real reason that we got hired. So if I'm an accountant, it's the actual accounting work. If I'm a programmer, it's the actual programming or the coding activities. And that hopefully makes sense you know, across the various job descriptions that are out there. There's some core production activity that the, the company is expecting from us. And we need to be competent. We certainly need to be able to do that job, but that's not going to be the game changer that's going to determine how valuable we are to the organization or even how much value we ultimately create for the organization. Above that, you have your basic management activities. And that includes everything from dealing with the direct reports to bosses to the things that we need to make visible to fit into the rest of the operations of the organization. And it excludes the really important types of meetings with our, with our uh, direct reports and our bosses and things. But it is the ongoing daily types of activities. And that rounds out the 80%. And then the, above that, we get into the 20%. So when we get in the top 20%, it's really all about how do we perform in those human interactions. And they can be in meetings, they can be in actual direct conversations, they can be over the telephone. But the common ingredient is that we are engaging with various types of people where the outcome of those conversations are really important. So it could be reviews, it could be strategic meetings, it could be problem solving meetings, and it's going to be with various types of people. But what I've noticed is that the hardest people to let go of and the most most paid, highly paid people are going to be those people that do a phenomenal job at really being effective at engaging in these types of conversations. Let's take a little bit more of a look at this, this top 20%. So if we decompose this top 20% so in, in one more layer of detail, what I'd say is that, again, the overarching idea is that it's managing important meetings and conversations, but there is a, even a hierarchy for that. And that's the highest one is boss, and other higher authorities. When we're interacting with them, we have the opportunity to demonstrate our abilities, demonstrate that we can collaborate, that we can problem solve, that we have the emotional discipline to restrain, to listen, to present information in collaborative ways, or not. <laughs> so it cuts both ways, I'm afraid. Um, likewise, if you take one step down in terms of visibility and leverage, but it is still incredibly important, and that's with clients. And whether it's an internal or external client is merely dependent on the type of work that you do. But we all have clients. We all have services that we need to provide. And the question is, how well do we engage with these various entities, these groups of people? How well do they feel like we are collaborating with them, that we're aligning with them, that we're trying to be productive and, and troubleshoot? How much do they trust us? All those things bode very, uh, very well for our upward mobility, our value to the organization, if we're strong in those areas. And quite frankly, we should be valued because we are being more productive. We're getting more things done. We're solving problems. We're working better with groups of people. But when you look at the essence of how does that take place, it takes place in these meetings and conversations. It is in this hand-to-hand -hand type of activity that is so unbelievably important. And it's kind of known by the organization, but it's never called out this way. Thus, I want to put this in this presentation. The third one is this, the, the last tier is direct reports. How well do we interact with our direct reports so they feel that, that they are in an environment, that they're being developed, that it's collaborative also, that sure, they can be held accountable, but it's fair and there's a reasonable approach and things like that. But again, when you look at how that actually takes place, 
it's going to take the form of these meetings and these conversations when this type of an exchange and this type of a feeling is going to be produced. And so the question is, how well do we influence others in key conversations and meetings? Do we create that ability for people to go, wow, this guy's really trying to help. You know, this person is really uh, you know, focused on, on something that makes sense for everybody. Uh, you know, they're, they're listening to our needs. They're taking into consideration, you know, the full playing field, not just what seems to be important to them. They're able to clarify what we should do next to drive productivity. All those things play into this dynamic, but it really gets distilled down to this one area of how well do we manage these important conversations. So when we look at a smart strategy that would come from this concept of 20% of, of what we do, the most 20% really is highly involved in how effective we are at managing these important types of conversations. It only makes sense that a strategy would be to improve how effectively we manage our important conversations to increase our level of business value. I mean, that, that, that makes a ton of sense. But the challenge is that we've never been taught to improve the most valued 20% of our job description. So it's, it's really kind of an oddity and an excitement all at the same time that when you really distill down what is talent and, and how do we develop it, it would mean that talent has a lot to do with how well we manage ourselves, how well we manage those conversations. And the opportunity for developing and managing talent would be to improve that area, which brings us to our first problem which is that we've never been taught how to improve the most valued 20% of our job description. And that's, I'm not saying that from a standpoint of poor us, we're victims. I'm saying that the teaching's not out there and it's an interesting dilemma. So it is a problem. So we've got ourselves a smart strategy. Obviously we should increase, you know, whether it's our people or our own skill sets on how effectively do we manage these really important conversations or really important meetings and how do we prepare for them to make sure that they go as well as possible. Yet we've never been provided a structure by which we can do it. Let's let that problem sit for a second and take a look at another business rule, which is you can only improve what you can measure. And this is a concept that I'm sure you're very familiar with and lots of great business people such as Peter Drucker have, have made this, this type of a wording you know, very popular. And it's alive and well in the sense that it's very difficult, if not impossible, for us to understand how to make something better or whether even if something is getting better if we don't have the ability to measure it. This brings us to our second problem, which is it's not clear how to improve managing important conversations. Not only have we not been taught it in the past, but right now, even if we want to make it better for ourselves or for other people, it's not clear on how to go about doing this. And we have to ask the question, why has this key skill gone virtually unaddressed? And we just talked about the importance and the pervasiveness of it in terms of how it fits into the value of companies. And yet there really isn't any training on that or any focus or any measurement or any accountability on, hey, how well do you actually manage your important conversations? It's almost seems like an odd concept. And we have to ask the question, and why is this key skill gone virtually unaddressed? It isn't measured, it isn't taught, it isn't uh, expected. It's like this nice to have where we label people like being, they have a magnetic personality or they're, they're, they have a gift of gab or they have great soft skills or interpersonal skills and all these esoteric things that are not actionable. They are valuable and people move up the ranks and, and uh, obtain better opportunities in their career because of these things, but we don't have clarity on how to develop them. And that's wonderful for maybe three or 4% of the population out there. But what about the other 96 or 97% of us who you know, may not have that natural gift and it's something that we really ought to develop. So we get to our second problem, which is that it's not clear on how to improve managing important conversations. So problem number one was that nobody ever taught us. Problem number two is that even now it's not clear on what we can do to, to do them better. So we have to ask ourselves why has this not been addressed? And my theory is that we're in a communication conundrum. We've had hundreds of books written about communication. We have countless experts. We have equal number of topics and limitless techniques and skills around this concept of communication. So it's equivalent to having thousands of car parts without a model of a car to organize them into something manageable. It's like all these individual parts are wonderful and they're very important and, and necessary. Just like the concepts, the topics, the experts out there, they have something to say about very specific areas of, of communication, but it's not specific. It's not something that we can use. It's not that model to understand how all this stuff fits together and how to manage an overall conversation. And so what's been missing? A communication model is missing. 
a model that demonstrates how to manage important conversations, something that is easy to understand and remember in the heat of the key conversations, a model that's flexible enough to support people at various levels of ability and conversation complexity, one that provides the ability to measure a person's performance, and one that demonstrates a path of ever higher performance. And I got to ask, have you ever seen a communication model like this before? Because in my years of research, and I looked high and low because I had absolutely no desire to create my own, but I couldn't find one. So over the last several years, I've been working on establishing a model that does this. So I'm happy to report that we have created this at communication model, and it is appropriate for any conversation where there's a desired outcome. It clarifies the three fundamental steps and gateways for managing any important conversation. It accommodates all levels of ability and experience. It allows for measurement of performance. It extends to ever higher levels of performance and skills. And it provides a clear location for existing strategies or skills to go. Meaning that when you read a book, you know, right now, one of my challenges was when I was reading all these books, I almost felt like they're individuals. Like you, you had to really apply one or you had to put that book down and go apply something completely different from another book. Whereas with this model, you have the ability then to start plugging the great ideas and knowledge that comes from these books into something that is more holistic so you can see where it fits and you can work on things iteratively and you can work on them between books or between concepts. We don't need to try to memorize a, a specific series of events within a single book, but we may just pick and choose a couple good ideas. So that's what the ACT model allows us to now do. So now we're able to look at a strategy, which is our second strategy here, which is the utilize the ACT communication model to standardize how effectively we manage our important conversations. And so what we have is the, both the conversation steps that are called out clearly, saying there are many, many different ways that you can personalize this, but here are the, co the three core steps that you must take and the three gateways that you should utilize to move between those three steps. And with that, we now have something that people can look at and they can agree with and they can get behind because there's a level of clarity that simply didn't exist before. And then in addition to the steps, we also have the attributes that are necessary to bring the, the, the model to life, to help the user become proficient enough that it actually shows up in their day-to-day -day conversations that, that are the important ones. So that's the model. That's our second strategy. Use the model. Use it to support us to actually execute on the first strategy, which was, hey, we know that we need to be better at this. And, you know, and by doing so, it's really going to help the, the value of our, ourselves as well as the value that we create for the businesses. We have uh, active influence training to implement this model into organizations and into individuals' um, processes. And the training results end up being focused on stronger conversational performance, consistent communication model for people to use, a greater conversation accountability, meaning we can hold people more accountable. They're more open to being held accountable because it's just simply more clear on how to do it. And then the ability to measure conversational performance. Uh, again, a critical success factor, going back to our second business rule, what you can measure, you can improve and vice versa. And so when we have the ability to actually measure one's performance, it gives them the feedback that they're looking for. This is not about trying to beat people over the head and hold them accountable. It's really about trying to guide them and show them what does the next level look like? What does that next level, uh, the, that next type of discipline look like to be able to help you become an even more effective communicator over time? And then the training process. We utilize two to four sessions totaling about six hours, only six hours to get people up to speed on how to give themselves the, the ability to manage their own conversations, which is like next to nothing. I've trained people for years and years and years, and this is a pretty creative, iterative way of approaching it. So we use typically three or four sessions, but depending on geography and things, we can even get it down to two. And then between those sessions, we utilize skills, practice, and coaching to make sure that we're doing things to, to really test out the, the concepts and try things and troubleshoot and, and work on our skills. And so over a period of weeks, we can see this demonstrable change. And then we identify an ongoing maintenance strategy because just like any other skill set, we need to be able to maintain it. And so there's got to be a strategy for working on this over a period of time. So it's actually become that clear and easy to, to address something that's been virtually unaddressable until now. And I won't say that it was easy to identify the model in turn, when I look at all the iterations and all the testing and all the changes that have taken place. But now there's a model that's been well-tested, vetted, 
challenged by lots of lots of people. And so we're clear that there are these three core steps and these three gateways. And when we have that, we can put that information in front of a group and they can look at it and go, yep, that is clearly better than how I was approaching it before. And I can see that this is something I need to do. This is the best way that I can engage the people that I need to best communicate with. And so with that, it, it, we have an opportunity to really make a demonstrable bump in performance in something that's been very elusive up till now. So this training really allows us to directly address this, this core missing component of developing talent. And so I say the time is now. This knowledge is changing everything in business and we're just getting started. Within six hours of training and six weeks of elapsed, elapsed time, you can be measuring a new level of performance in you and or your people's most important aspects of their job description. So the question is, is it in your best interest to act on improving this most important 20% of your job description? I personally think it is, and I think it's unbelievably exciting. I've never been so excited to try to share a message before, and I take every opportunity I can to share these concepts. So I hope to hear from you soon, both on feedback of the, the content of this, as well as what would it look like to take your organization, identify the most critical conversation types that are taking place that aren't going as well as they need to. It could be truly with clients. It could be interdepartmental. It could be between manager and direct reports, or it could be from middle managers managing up into the organization. It doesn't matter what it is, but now we have the opportunity to quickly identify a best practices on how to do it better, we have the ability to train quickly and demonstrate clearly what is expected of people and how they can perform better. And we only need to wait a matter of weeks to start seeing measurable improvements in those important areas, let alone if we're looking at developing talent over a period of time. I hope you found this information insightful and really eliciting a desire for you to get after this and, and start looking at your program development and your personal development in, in a slightly different way. Because now I believe you have new options that you didn't have before. And that is that you have the ability to address directly this critical skill set of how well do we manage our various types of conversations to support the overall productivity of business. I think it's a game changer. Love to talk to you more about it and see where it takes us. Thanks.